Well, folks, we're about two months away from the first deadline of Remote ID and things are as confusing as ever. And you've been asking a lot of questions. So we decided we were going to make a video to, well, try to answer some of what's been happening in the last couple of months and what's not been happening really primarily. And then trying to answer some of your questions. Should you wait to buy a drone? Uh, will your drone be actually retrofitted? Uh, what happens if you don't comply? Will the FAA come after you and your first newborn? Or where, when and where can you buy a remote ID drone. So we'll try to talk about all this and then uh, answer some of your questions in the comments. So let's get to it. But before we get started with all of this, let's get a little bit of background on Remote ID. Some of you may be aware of it because you've been in this industry for a while. I know we get a lot of new listeners on a regular basis, so I'm gonna cover a little bit about what Remote ID is. And essentially what it is, it's a tracking software that's gonna be inside of all drones that are gonna be flying in the airspace in the United States. Uh, there are some exceptions. If you have a small drone, less than 250 grams or 0.55 pounds, and you're gonna be flying it for recreational purposes and you will not need to have a remote ID on your drone. The, the very easy way to remember this is if your drone needs to be registered, then it's going to need to have remote ID. That's really the bottom line. Now, this has been surprisingly in effect since April of 2021. We are recording this video in June of 2022, and I know we're getting close to the first deadline, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So the FAA came up with this regulation called Part 89 in uh, April of 2021, and it's been in the books ever since. And there's really three different ways that you as the user are going to comply with Remote ID, or not if you decide not to do that, but um, you're gonna either buy a drone that has standard remote ID equipped inside of the drone, so there's not a whole lot that you have to do except turn on the drone and fly it, or if you have an older drone, you'll be able to buy what's called a module. And that module is gonna look like maybe a little key fob um, and something that you're gonna put maybe one of those strobe lights that you buy, and that's gonna go on top of your drone, and then you'll be able to, well, send the required signal and meet the requirement. And the last method is if you don't wanna have a drone that is equipped with remote ID, then you'll be flying that drone at what the FAA calls a FRIA. It's an FAA identification area where um, they will be identified on the map and you'll be able to go there and it, it, imagine an AMA or a flight test facility where you can just go and basically just, just fly your, uh, your drone. Now, there are two dates that we need to remember that are very important. And the reason we're doing this video is because one of them is coming up right around the corner and that's September 16 of 2022. This is the middle of June as we're recording this. So we're about two months away from this deadline. And this deadline basically says that UAS manufacturers will have to comply with remote ID, which means that they won't be able to sell you a drone or manufacture a drone after this deadline without having met the requirements of remote ID. We'll talk about what that means in a second because it's more complex than just these few lines in a piece of regulation. And then the next deadline is a year later, 16th of September of 2023, you as the pilot will not be able to fly without having a drone equipped with remote ID unless you fly at one of the uh, uh, areas that the FAA has identified. So how does actually remote ID work? We get this question on a regular basis. Well, the way that I like to explain it is imagine having a flying Wi-Fi router. Okay, you have a router at your house and that router sends the signal to all your Wi-Fi devices, your phone, your, uh, your TV, whatever it is that's connected, right? Well, your drone is essentially gonna become this flying Wi-Fi. It's gonna be um, a, a device that's gonna be broadcasting a bunch of information and sending it to people that are on the ground that can receive that information. Now the signal can either be Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. We see that in most cases, we think most of manufacturers are gonna be using Wi-Fi because well, it's a technology that's pretty much already available on board of most aircraft. So that's what it is. Someone on the ground will have a phone or an iPad or a device to receive that information and then they'll be able to look up the information. I might say, what information, what is the drone gonna be sending? Are they gonna be sending my name, my phone number, my location? Well, it's gonna really depend whether you have have a standard remote ID drone, so a drone that comes equipped with remote ID, or if you're gonna have a drone that uses a module on top of it, okay? But in all cases, what you're gonna have is some identification number, so a serial number of sorts or a session ID, something that's gonna identify the drone. Not, not your name, not your phone number at this stage. Uh, this is just gonna be some random number, okay? And then there's gonna be the location of the drone, the latitude, longitude, the altitude, and then the velocity of the drone, meaning the speed and the direction of flight, 
All right, so that's another element in the message. And then there's gonna be information about the control station. Now, if you have a drone that's equipped with the remote ID inside of it, then the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the control station, meaning you, is also going to be broadcasted in that signal, which means that whoever is receiving the signal will be able to know where you are. If you have a module, then it's only going to be broadcasting the takeoff location, the, the takeoff point of the drone, all right? And it's also gonna have an emergency status if you have a standard remote ID drone, not if you have the just the module, which means that if your drone is running low on fuel or if it's in RTH, return to home, or maybe if it's lost link with the controller, there's gonna be an emergency signal to uh, say that. And then there's gonna be just a time code to basically say uh, when was that signal sent. So that's part of the signal that's gonna be sent from this Wi-Fi router that flies in the sky to the ground where someone is going to have a cell phone and receive that information. Now, common questions that we get from, from students and from people is, will my name and my address be displayed in that uh, message? And the answer is no. The only people that have access to that data is going to be the FAA and law enforcement if they request that data from the FAA. And then the next question is, will, a, will people, anyone, be able to see uh, my drone location? And sadly, the answer is yes. If they have the ability to pick up the signal from your drone, which if you're pretty close, you should be able to, then you'll be able to see the drone location and your location as well if you're flying a remote ID drone. Now, it's controversial. Uh, this is not something that we really enjoy having in the regulation. This is something that we think is gonna lead to issues. Uh, we've talked to the FAA over and over again, not just us, but the industry in general. And uh, sadly, it doesn't look like this is gonna change. So um, I think we have to uh, to prepare ourselves for the reality of what this is gonna do, where your location and a drone location is gonna be broadcasted to anyone who can pick up that signal, okay? And then another question that we get a lot is, will I be able to move my module from one drone to the next? And the answer is yes. Uh, it will likely be a lot easier if you do that as a recreational pilot than if you do it as a part 107 pilot, but we still have to get some of the details from the FAA on that. So let's get to kind of the meat and potatoes of this, which is what is going on right now? What's the update as of June of 2022? Uh, what's been going on? And the answer is, well, not a whole lot, unfortunately. And this is the reason why we're making this video is because it looks like nobody is really in a rush to comply with remote ID, which is not so surprising in a sense, but at the moment, two months away from this deadline, there's currently no means of compliance approved by the FA uh, to get a remote ID solution out there. Now you're gonna say, what the heck is a means of compliance, Greg? Well, means of compliance is a document that the FA would approve in order for someone to test their device. So let's say that DJI, we'll use DJI as an example, wanted to get a remote ID drone, well, there would need to be somewhere a means of compliance that they can follow that says, okay, in order to meet the, regu the regulation requirements, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, and this is how we're gonna be testing this um, this this drone. And at the moment, we don't have that. And it's kind of surprising. Um, it's kind of surprising because we're only two months away. And, um, and the reason why we don't have it, quite frankly, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure other people that are closer to this will have that information, but but at the moment, we just don't have it. So what that means is that most manufacturers at the moment, they don't have a way to get their documents approved by the FA to get a remote ID drone, which is which is scary in a sense, right? Because we're two months away and, um, and that document would be made available on the FA website. We'll put a link down if you wanna keep checking. But our guess is that either the manufacturers are holding their cards really close to their chest at the moment until September, possibly sometime beginning of September, and then we'll start to see these approvals pop up, or they're gonna get caught with their pants down. And uh, I think it's gonna really depend on the size of the manufacturer and if they think that this is something that can be enforced, quite frankly. Now you may ask, what is with that deadline, September 16, 2022, what happens then? Well, according to the regulation, it's if you wanna get uh, geeky and get all the details, it's uh, 14 CFR 89515. It says, after September 16, 2022, no person may produce, produce being a keyword here, an unmanned aircraft for operation in the airspace of the United States, okay? I'm gonna say that again, and, and we'll have the text here showing you at the same time. No person may produce an unmanned aircraft for operation in the airspace of the United States, unless it is designed and produced to meet the minimum performance requirement for standard remote ID. In plain language, what does this mean? It means that manufacturers that are gonna produce a drone after September 16 of 2022, 
are going to have to make sure that it meets the requirement for standard remote ID, a standard that we haven't set yet because we don't have any means of compliance that are approved. You can see where this is going, right? This is, this is troubling at best, at best. Now, we still have a lot of questions ourselves about this whole process. First off, as I'm reading the regulation that I just gave you, it says production. What is the production date? What is the FA going to be using as production date? Does that mean that if DJI manufactures a drone on September 16th of 2022, it needs to have remote ID? What if it's a Mavic 2 Pro that's five years old? Or, well, several, several years old. I mean, it's not five years old. It feels like it is. Um, what if they manufacture a P4P, Phantom 4 Pro. What if Hotel is doing the same thing, manufacturing a Nano Plus that existed, that's been existing for several months? So the question here at this stage is, what is the date of production? What is the FA going to be using, and how they're going to verify that? I try to find the date that my drone was produced, and I can't find it anywhere. It's not on the box. It's not in the software. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. But at this stage. I don't know how we're going to know that this drone was produced after this date or before this date because I don't think we have a way to keep track of that. Okay, second question that I have is who will enforce this? Obviously the FAA, but also who at the FAA is going to enforce this? We've seen a lack of enforcement or at least it looks like a lack of enforcement of Part 107 regulation. Um, and what are the fines going to be? What if a manufacturer says, I'm just going to keep producing drones. What are you going to do about it? All right, I don't have the answer, quite frankly. And, and I would like you to tell me in the comments what you think is going to happen, who's going to enforce, and what are the fines going to be. And then another thing that's very troubling is home-built aircraft. Okay, now I'm going to read you the definition of what a home-built aircraft is as per the FAA, as per Part 89. This is in 89.1 in definitions. The FAA says a home-built unmanned aircraft is an unmanned aircraft that, had, that an individual built solely for education or recreation purposes. Okay, let's let that sink in for a second. Your Part 107 pilot. FPV pilot, you build your own drone. Or we have Octozilla right around the office, right? You've seen it in some of our videos. We've built this beautiful drone. And let's say that we were to build it after September 16th of 2022. Let's say we wanted to do version 2.0 of Octozilla. Well, guess what? It's not a drone that's built for education or recreation. Now, we have fun doing it, but it is a drone that's used by Pilot Institute, which is a commercial business. So in this case, this would be a drone operated under Part 107 that is home built. Well, guess what? As per the regulation, if you look at 89.515, I'm going to say from the top of my head, then that drone needs to comply with Remote ID. It means that us, Pilot Institute, the producer of this drone, will have to go through the paperwork in order to get that drone Remote ID compliant. Let that sink in. And I pause for a reason. I'm not, I'm not just thinking about what I'm going to say next. I want you to think about this. If you're building your own drones and you fly them under Part 107, as per the regulation, then you're going to have to meet the requirements of Remote ID. And not only that, it's worse than that. You're going to say, well, Graham, I'm just going to buy a module and I'm going to put it on top of it. That's not how it works because the regulation says that if you're producing a drone after this deadline, I just read you the paperwork, it says, that you need to meet the requirement of standard remote ID drone, not module, not module. It says you need to meet the standard remote ID requirements, which are way more complex because it means that we're going to have to find a system and design a system that is going to prevent Octozilla from taking off if remote ID is not working correctly. Well, guess what? A module doesn't do that, okay? That's a remote ID, standard remote ID drone requirement. Now, you can see where this is going. This is not going in the right direction, quite frankly. This is going to be making things extremely difficult for small manufacturers, individual manufacturers, or individual home builders that are building drones for Part 107 because they're not considered home-built aircraft because they're not for education and recreation. All right. One more, I guess ready for this one. Now, this is kind of a question that I have, but will a retrofitted drone, let's say you have a Mavic 2 Pro. I like using that drone because it's still a drone that's, um, that's recent and recent enough that you can still buy it to use it. Now, if DJI decided to buy software, retrofit this drone with a remote ID software, which they said they can do, right? What if they put that in the system? Does that make my drone a remote ID drone or does that make my drone a drone with a module on top of it? Okay. And does it actually meet all the requirements for standard remote ID? Because, well, there are some fine prints in there. For example, the serial number. 
The Mavic 2 Pro does not have the serial number that meets the requirement for standard remote ID. It sounds stupid, but that's how deep the regulation goes into. If you look at the new drones, the Mavic 3 and the, uh, the Mini 3, they both have different serial numbers. Are they gonna change the serial number of my drone? If so, then how's that even possible? So you can see, all these questions are unanswered, at least by us, and I've been trying to read that regulation as much as I can. Now, I'm gonna finish this video because uh, I know we need to get done, but as you can tell, this is a topic, one, I'm very passionate about, and two, I think there's we're two months away from this requirement and, and there's still no answers, and no one is talking about this. No one seems to be really concerned about what is happening and what's around the corner, at least from what I've seen from videos online. I'm gonna make a prediction, I'll make a couple of predictions. First off, some people say, well, remote ID implementation is gonna be delayed because we're not ready for it. Well, I have a newsflash for you. That's not how the FAA does thing. Uh, I remember when we talked about implementing ADSB for airplanes. Uh, I've been in the aviation industry for 20 years. About a decade ago, the FAA said, hey, uh, in, well, about 20 years ago, the FAA said, hey, in a decade, you're gonna to have to have ADSB in all your airplane. And then people say, ah, oh, they're gonna delay, they're gonna delay, and guess what? Get to the end, they never delayed it, okay? They gave 10 years to do this. The FA gave about a year and a half or two years for remote ID to be implemented. It's not gonna change because it's all in the regulation. It's all in part 89. In order to change that, you need an act of Congress for them to change the regulation. Ain't gonna happen, okay? So we are stuck with this. What's gonna happen with non-compliance from manufacturers? Is the FA going to enforce? And if so, this is going to be an enforcement nightmare. Like I said, the FA is not equipped to go after these manufacturers. At least I don't think so. Maybe, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I don't know that they can do that, okay? And then the next prediction is maybe some of the larger manufacturers like DJI uh, are just going to be complying and then taking more market shares because they'll be able to sell their drones where everybody else get uh, caught with their hands in the sand. So. Uh, uh, this is gonna be interesting to say the least. I, I, I can't wait to see what happens, but I kinda wanna go back to those initial questions that I had in there. Should you wait to buy a drone with remote ID? I'm gonna say, don't wait. Don't make remote ID a decision because at one point you'll be able to put a module on top of it and just keep flying the drone. So uh, I would not say yes or no to a drone today. Even two months away from this, uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. We could see in September 14, uh, DJI releasing a brand new drone with remote ID in it, I don't know. Uh, but at this stage, I, I have a feeling that it will be pretty easy to actually comply if you wanna just put a module. Uh, will my drone be retrofitted? Who knows? Nobody does except the manufacturers and maybe some of them don't even know that. So uh, we'll have to wait and, and see that. Now, that requirement here for retrofit is not for another year. So we don't have to worry about that part just yet, okay, September of 2023. And then what happens if you don't comply in September of 2023? Um, I don't know. I don't know if the FAA is gonna go after people like they haven't been going after people that don't have part 107 or at least not after a lot of people. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this. So I think we still have a lot of unanswered question. I know this may not be what you were looking for, but uh, I wanted to bring up this, this issue, the fact that we do have a lot of unanswered questions and we're only two months away from this first deadline. So that's all I have. I'm sure you'll have a ton of comments, leave them in there. Uh, if you're not following us, please follow. Uh, we're getting really close to 50,000 followers. So uh, anything will help us. And then uh, that's all I have. I'll see you in the next video.